we're working our way through the deployment of SRM, uh, the next piece of the puzzle is what we call inventory mapping. Um, and inventory mappings, if you read through the documentation, are entirely optional. This is not a required element. You do not have to do inventory mappings. But uh, I hope to deploy or to explain to you in the next little while why they're something that you would really want to do as a part of your SRM deployment. So inventory mappings are relatively straightforward. Think about your environment this way. You've got a virtual machine that you'd like to protect that lives, for instance, in your New York data center. Uh, when the New York data center has a problem and somebody decides that a failover needs to occur, um, where is that virtual machine going to show up in the Chicago data center because that's its designated recovery site? Um, and when I say show up, well, what do you mean show up? Well, don't forget, a virtual machine has a home in the hosts and clusters view. In other words, what resource pool does it belong to? Um, also, when you go to a virtual machines and templates view, you end up putting a virtual machine into a virtual machine folder. And it's reasonable to say that you probably don't want to mix those up with the virtual machines that are running in Chicago. We would like to keep those that are failing over in a unique inventory environment. And what this allows us to do, what inventory mappings let us do, is they let us take those objects. So anything that lives in a resource pool called 123 is going to fail over into a resource pool called 456 or something like that. I mean, your naming is completely up to you. The mapping is what ties the two together. We do exactly the same thing with networks. So it's reasonable to say that I've got a production network in the New York office, but I maybe don't want my virtual machines when they fail over from New York over to Chicago to actually show up on the Chicago production network. We may want them on an isolated network unto themselves. We may need them on a completely different VLAN. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to deploy what we call inventory mappings, which are essentially placeholders which say when this v machine fails from the protected site to the recovery site, we're going to place them on this network. And that information is all stored in what we call, it's a configuration file for the virtual machine when it fails over. And those need to be stored in what we call a placeholder data store. Um, so as I said earlier when we introduced this module, if the virtual machine has one of these elements which is not completely mapped, then when you go to protect the virtual machine, when you go to list that VM for protection, you're going to be required to go in and solve that problem. In other words, I'd like to protect my database server in New York, if I don't already have his network mapped, then when you go to protect it, it will ask you, it will come up and prompt you. And I don't know, if you're kind of like me and I'm going to protect 50, 75, 100 virtual machines, then I don't want to have to go through that manually. I'd like to say, do this, and from there on in, if I protect a VM that's connected to this network, it will automatically be connected to that network when it fails over. And the same principle applies to virtual machine folders and also resource pools. Okay, so the demonstration that we're about to embark on is going to show you exactly this. We're going to walk through uh, configuring inventory mappings. So we're going to look at the resource pools, we're going to look at virtual machine folders, we're going to look at uh, the network mappings. We're also going to configure those placeholder data stores. And then last but not least, I'm also going to configure our VMs for protection using vSphere replication. So now that we've got the entire environment deployed, we're now going to say, I'd like to protect this virtual machine so that the replication process starts so that we can then move forward with the next step in actually deploying and configuring SRM. And really now we're more in the configuring stage. So inventory mapping is the subject on the table right now. So if we select our site, um, go to the vSphere replication dialog box, we can see that we're finished with all of that stuff. We've got the green checks beside all of those uh, following on from the last piece. Uh, go back to our sites dialog box, um, and if we look down the list of uh, items on the Getting Started tab, we see the ability to set up inventory mappings. So click on one of those links, uh, go through resource mappings for instance, and you'll notice that we've now browsed into the uh, environment where we show all of the uh, virtual machine uh, resource pools that are listed as a part of the uh, uh, Honeydew 03 site. So what we're going to do is we're going to configure an environment whereby we create a mapping for the protected services over to the recovered services on the opposing site. Uh, so in other words, when a virtual machine that lives in the application servers folder uh, or application servers resource pool on the protected site actually fails over, 
Uh, when it goes through the failover process, it will show up on the recovery site under a folder called Recovered Services, uh, which means that it won't get intermixed with all of the other running virtual machines that may be in existence on our recovery site. So we simply proceed to map through all of the various different resource pools in this particular instance uh, to go across. Now that's one page, and those are resource mappings, as we show at the top tab. So once we're happy with those, and by the way, don't forget to take some time to have a look at those to make sure that you got them in the right place. Did you fail them over to the recovered services area? Um, you know, and in this case, it looks like we've got one that's a, a little interesting. We've got protected services failing over to protected services. And uh, not sure that's exactly what we wanted. So to fix that is simply a double click uh, on that dialog box or configure mapping again if you choose to do so. Uh, and then we can choose the appropriate folder. So, uh, you know, minor items are easy to fix, and the good news is, there we go showing you the fix. So, at that point, the rest looks pretty good. We can proceed onwards and take a look at some of the other items. Recovered services here are not shown as being mapped, uh, but that's no big deal. Once we select folder mappings, we're going to do exactly the same thing as we did under resource mappings. Take any folder that has VMs in it that you expect to fail over and tell SRM into which folder you want those VMs to show up should a failover occur. So here we're mapping protected services to recovered services in the VMs and templates view. Okay? And we would do exactly the same thing on site 4. Notice that we just selected site 4, go back and do exactly the same thing in an equal and opposite direction. And the idea being here that we're building out an infrastructure whereby uh, one site is the recovery site for the opposite site and vice versa. Uh, and then network mappings, it's much the same idea. Take any of your resource or, or your uh, port groups and take those and map those to the appropriate port group on the recovery site. So if a VM is plugged into ProdNet on Honeydew 04, we want it to be plugged into ProdNet on Honeydew 03. And it doesn't have to be ProdNet. It could be some completely different network. That's up to you in terms of how you do the failover process. You may want to have it fail over onto a completely separate and isolated VLAN, but you would need to have a port group in existence to make that happen. So these port groups have to exist before you do this task. And there we've shown you doing both sides of it, both from Site 3 and Site 4's perspective. Placeholder data stores are where we put the virtual machine configuration files on the recovery site in anticipation of that VM failing over. And what's stored in there, it's, it's a mini config file for each VM. And what gets put in there are these mappings, right? Essentially, which, which resource pool, which uh, folder, and all the rest of those settings, network connections, and all those that go into the back end. So we're going to simply choose a data store which exists in the recovery site where the placeholder VMs are going to be put uh, and the, as, they're, as we prepare to fail them over from the protected site. So now that we've completed the inventory mappings and we've configured some virtual machines for protection via vSphere replication, um, we can then start to look at the next steps. However, the next step for you might be to consider getting some more training on SRM. And the way we do that, go to vmware.com slash education, search for SRM5, install, configure, manage, and that'll be the class that'll give you all of the hands-on necessary to deploy this in your own organization.